like a bump map. What I'm going to do here is take this channel and edit, copy, merge it, and edit, paste it right on top. I'm going to move this to the topmost layer and do an image adjustment uh, black and white. Now the secret here is to get a gray. See how there's a lot of whites in here? You don't want a lot of whites in there. You want a very muted gray to appear here. So we have to first find whatever channel that's existing on, which is probably existing on the blue channel. We have to get that as muted as possible, and then we're just going to have to do a level adjustment on it also. Alright, so what I did, I took the saturation down all the way, making it just a little bit less toned. Okay, so now what we could do is go image, adjustment, levels, and we're going to try to get as much white out of here as possible. Okay, white existing over on this side of the street. There we go. That's what I'm looking for, that nice gray, gray tone. So what I did, I eliminated white out of the mix. And this eliminates white right here. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to treat this as a bump map. Now I know that's a very cheap way to make a bump map, but it's actually a really efficient way. Um, the, the other thing that you could do is take it into ZBrush and puff up the detail, but really in... I don't know. It, it, when it, when it comes down to it, uh, how much time do you want to spend doing that? And it yields just about the same results. So here we go. Bump. Okay, so I can go right back to Maya, and now I can look at this bump channel here. And since I'm right here in the material, I'm just going to assign it right here. I can go into the hypershade if I want to too, but. And this is just a regular straight bump map. And since I can't really see too much in here, boy, talk about having no room. Okay, so there's bump. So I get the file name, I assign it the bump, and it looks bumpy not really until I go into the high quality rendering setting and then you can really see the bumps and then you're gonna really have to adjust it too so once you click on that high quality render setting you can see a, a huge change in things so this is where you adjust it actually I recommend that bumps don't be so bumpy maybe 0.25 bumpiness it's just a slight variation just slight and now the problem is it exists here I mean in my I have total control over you know how much bumpiness I really have here uh, if you're producing this for some kind of game engine however you know you might not have that level of control so you have to kind of think well what am I producing this part for. I'm producing it for maybe a game engine. In that case, you know, I have to control most of the incidents back here uh, in Photoshop land and decide, well, I got to tone that, that bump map down a lot. And to do that, all you do is have to make another channel just below it and uh, fill that with like oh, a 50% gray. So you could type in 50 and you go right below that 
And then you could take this and lower the opacity down on it and it'll wash those troubles away. Okay, so that's a good way to uh, tone down the bumpiness on a bump map. All right, so let's just test that out. I save that out as bump. In this one, I'm going to go back into the file and reload it. You can almost you're going to be able to see it, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the video with the resolution I got. I might even have to go lower than that. Yep. So the lower I go on the opacity, the lower the bumps go. So this is what my workflow is with how to get a bump map. And as exciting as depthifying as it looks, it's really quite boring. So I'm going to go on with something else in the videos and enjoy the bump map.